It's the 2nd of September, 1916, over the battlefields of northern France. A British BE-2 light bomber makes its way over the front line, escorted by three DH-2 single-seater fighters. A pilot of one of the DH-2s takes a look below, witnessing the dreadful scar of no man's land, carving its way across the continent. Relegating his thoughts to the back of his mind, the pilot prepares to fulfill their mission when something prompts him to look up. A grey bird emerges from the cloud above, coming down upon the formation. In the time before radios, he can't warn his fellows, so the pilot bravely steers to meet his opponent's assault on his own. The two machines exchange a volley of gunfire across the heavens. The German aviator is forced to pull away from the DH-2's deadly barrage. The two become locked in combat as the rest of the British aircraft fly away, completely unaware of the battle. Below, soldiers can do nothing but watch the mesmerizing display. Two man-made warbirds clashing in a duel to the death. The skillful German evades all the fire and returns for home, but the British airmen won't let him go that easily. The very fast DH-2 chases after the nimble German fighter, pursuing the enemy beyond no man's land. The German pilot skillfully evades the rain of lead headed his way, but the British fighter remains undeterred. He can feel victory at his fingertips, but little does he know he's playing right into the Germans' hands. Deep in enemy territory and led astray from his compatriots, his Lewis gun jams. Noticing the sudden end to the gunfire, the grey bird makes a loop in the air and pulls up behind the DH-2. His barrage is deadly and precise. The British pilot fights hard to evade, but there's nothing he can do. The engine is torn to pieces behind him and the aircraft falls from the sky. The victorious pilot watches as his opponent makes a rough landing in the field below. He can't help but smirk, for he had just claimed his 20th victory. His name is Oswald Bolker. He became interested in flying from an early age and applied for aviation duty right away after joining the army. He impressed in his exam and successfully lobbied to be assigned alongside his brother, who had also become a pilot shortly before him. On the 1st of September, the Bolka Bolka aircrew would take off for their first of many sorties. With Oswald at the controls, the duo proved a force to be reckoned with. The brothers flew more often and for longer than anyone else in the detachment, braving weather that no other crew dared. Their skills were quickly noticed, particularly Oswald's. Meanwhile, at the Fokker factories, a new aircraft was rolling off the line. The Fokker E-1 Eindecker, featuring one of the first gun synchronizers that allowed the machine guns to fire through the propellers. However, this aircraft proved very difficult to fly, so High Command decided that it would only be assigned to the very best pilots of the Young Air Corps. Oswald would be chosen as one of those elites. He and the rest of the Eindecker pilots were given a very quick introduction to the aircraft before they were sent out on their first missions. In August 1915, Volker ambushed a British observation biplane. He swept in from behind and opened fire. His shocked opponent attempted to flee, but Volker was too close to miss. He chased after the British aircraft, firing away until a volley struck the engine and it seized in the air. Ever chivalrous, Volker ceased his assault and the British pilot made an emergency landing inside Allied lines. It was his first victory in a single-seater and the start of a legend. Victories wrapped up fast for Bolka and for the entire Eindecker forces and their fame grew to match. Soon, he couldn't go anywhere without civilians and soldiers gathering to meet him. It was this fame that brought about a particular incident on the 1st of October, 1915. Bolka was on a train to a new post when he was approached by a then unknown struggling pilot by the name of Manfred von Richthofen. Just a year younger than Bolka, he quickly struck a conversation, heading straight to the point of aerial combat, and more specifically, 
how to be good at it. With four victories under his belt, Bolka was still evolving his tactics, so he couldn't give any advice beyond aim well. Still, Richthofen made a good impression on Bolka, and the two remained in touch. In the air, Bolka's victories kept racking up. Trading the title of the deadliest ace in the world back and forth with his friend, Max Immelmann. Both of their twin tallies rocketed into double digits. They were both awarded the Blue Max. But the ace race would have an abrupt end when Immelmann was killed in a dogfight in mid-June 1916. The news shocked the nation and the German government grounded Bolka, fearful to lose their second great ace shortly after the other. By this time, Bolka had 19 victories under his belt. With this experience, he would put pen to paper and write what he considered to be the most fundamental rules of air combat, named the Dicta Bolka. Try to secure advantages before attacking. If possible, keep the sun behind you. Always carry through an attack when you've started it. Fire only at close range and only when your opponent is properly in your sights. Always keep your eye on your opponent and never let yourself be deceived by ruses. In any form of attack, it's essential to assail your enemy from behind. If your opponent dives on you, do not try to evade his onslaught, but fly to meet it. When over the enemy's lines, never forget your own line of retreat. For the squadron, attack on principle, in groups of four or six. When the fight breaks up into a series of single combats, take care that several don't go for the same opponent. These would go on to form the groundwork of dogfight strategy throughout both world wars and earn him the nickname the father of air combat. He spent over a month grounded, but his skills were far from forgotten. With the war intensifying, the government brought Bolka back into the fray and he was given a command of a new squadron, the Jagdstaffel II. Bolka took up the position eagerly, using his fame to recruit the most promising talent, among them a certain Manfred von Richthofen. He would teach everything he knew to the pilots of the Yasta, especially the Dicta Volka, and success quickly materialized. In just two and a half months of existence, the squadron claimed 50 victories with only six casualties. A large part of those victories were contributed by Richthofen, the man he had met in passing on a train, proved himself to be one of Volka's most skilled pupils and would later go on to immortalize his name in the pages of history as the Red Baron. Volker himself would see his personal number of victories double, reaching 40 by the end of October 1916. The Yasta grew a reputation and the members became tight-knit. Volker taught by example, instilling respect and developing a friendship with all of his men. On the 28th of October 1916, Bolka and five of his best pilots threw themselves into a dogfight against a pair of British fighters. In the chaos, Bolka and his best friend, Erwin Baum, chased after the same target in breach of his own dicta. The two flew close to each other, but had the awareness to give space. As they're pursuing, they don't notice the second enemy comes in from the side and cuts across their nose. Both evade the last second with Burma dodging upwards and Bolka downwards. But in the process, the pair lose sight of each other. Blocked by his own wings, Burma is unable to see Bolka coming up from underneath him. The two realize at the last moment and try to pull away, but it's too late. From a distance, the Red Baron watches as the tip of Bolka's wing hits the underside of Burma's aircraft and its fragile cloth covering rips. Initially, the two aircraft separate well, 
but the wind rips the tear on Borka's wing ever wider. He wrestles for control as his wing shreds off, but it's inevitable. The aircraft enters an unrecoverable spin. Richthofen follows his mentor and friend all the way down until he crashes into the earth. A continent mourned his passing. A funeral procession brought his coffin to his home city of Dassau, where he would be put to rest. Today, a grand monument stands atop his grave, fitting of his legacy. Two days after the funeral, a lone British fighter would fly over the German lines and drop a wreath. With it was a note that read, from the English Air Corps to the officers of the German Air Corps, we hope that you will find this wreath. We sympathize with his relatives and friends, and we pay tribute to his bravery. In commemoration of Captain Bulka, our brave and chivalrous opponent. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and please watch more videos of ours. Thank you.